Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. I'm going to read from the message translation on today. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. It reads, and that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and his angels. I want to take a few moments to talk from the subject title of you all will help me on today. I want to talk from the subject title, you're stronger than you think. You're stronger than you think. As we look at this movie, many of you overlooked the movie because the movie originally came out in 1998. It followed up the story, the movie of Toy Story. And as a result, they used cutting edge technology to tell the story of a colony of ants. And a colony of ants was attacked by a group of grasshoppers that tried to intimidate them, that tried to isolate them, and gave them misinformation. And I believe the scene that you just watched kind of sums up the whole scenario that we may not be facing grasshoppers or locusts, but there's a real enemy that is attempting to oppose us. As I was looking at this particular movie, it's amazing that the enemy, the locust, the grasshopper, only shows up when it's harvest time. And isn't that amazing that the enemy will be on vacation until it's harvest season? And then watch this. He tries to take what's yours. And this is the reason you have to learn how to fight spiritually so that you can obtain the promise. Because the enemy understands that his days are numbered. He understands that he doesn't have the ability to produce. So what he'll try to do is corrupt your production. And so we have believers that are saved, that love God, and that are trying to please him, must understand that faith requires a fight. And so the enemy will love to lie, to oppose us through his schemes. This is what Paul talks about. Because schemes are the enemy's strategy. In other words, the enemy uses wiles, we call them deceptions, to confuse the people of God. And the truth of the matter is, Paul does not want us to be ignorant concerning the schemes of the enemy. And so if schemes are the enemy's strategy, then strength must be God's strategy. And so God gives us strength for his schemes. And I know some of us are facing some big situations on today, but I want you to know that his strength is perfected even in your weakness. God works through strength. Humility is strength. Humility is silent strength. Meekness is strength under control, but strength is needed because strength is how we oppose the strategy of the enemy. Strength is the enablement to be or do what God has desired for your life. In other words, if strength gives me the ability to do and be, the enemy would try to oppose what I do and who I am. And many times he tries to deceive us through what we call a lie. The Bible says that he is the father 
of lies. And so the opposition is always strong, but God is giving you strength for his strategy. Why don't you just say that with me? Say, God's giving me strength for the enemy's strategy. Because sometimes the enemy will cause us to become discouraged because of what the enemy has presented to us. I want you to understand this. That's why Abraham, the Bible says, he grew stronger in faith and he did not stagger at the word. He did not stumble. He was steady. Because one thing about strength, strength will make you steady. Because the enemy wants us to be unstable. Can I share with you where the enemy is attacking us? The enemy is attacking us in our minds. James picks it up and says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And so you got to understand that the enemy has a hit on you, that the enemy is trying to bring you down because he wants to see your demise. But God has given us strength and his sovereignty to be able to face the enemy. The strength of God gives us stability. And I'm grateful that he gives us strength for today and hope for tomorrow because God is faithful. And so I want you to know no matter what you look like or what you feel like on today, you are stronger than you think. We got to have a paradigm shift because God has given us strength because Paul speaks very clearly to this church and he tells them in the King James Version, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I knew I was going to get some amens when I start talking from the King James Version. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. Paul is speaking to a group of believers, but he's saying there's some strength that you can possess that the enemy wants you to be ignorant to. He wants you to continue to be intimidated by his snares and his trials, but the enemy is a liar, and God has given you everything that pertaineth to life and to godliness. Amen? Amen. And so that's the truth of the matter is that God is calling us so the enemy will lie about a few things. The enemy will lie about a few things. First of all, the enemy will lie about your ability. The enemy will lie about your ability. Yeah, that's what he does to the ant. He lies about the ant's ability. Then second, the enemy will lie about your assignment. The enemy will lie about your assignment, watch this, he tries to get the ants to question their assignment. So he lies about your ability, he lies about your assignment, and he lies about your authority. Yeah, yeah. He lies about your ability, he lies about your assignment, he lies about your authority. Because watch this, if he told you the truth, you would realize who you really were. And the reason the enemy wants to lie to you about your assignment is because he knows that your anointing lies in your assignment. This is why he tries to confuse us as he did the ant. Watch this. He says, you were designed to serve us. The ant said, hold up. I see the lie. And so I'm going to reverse what you said and realize you were designed to serve me. See, the enemy realized that you knew that he was designed to be under your feet feet, he'll be intimidated by you. And so you really got to know who you are in Jesus Christ. And so watch this. He lies about the assignment. I want to submit this to you that the enemy, he deceives us. And so for many of us, we have been frustrated because the enemy has seemingly been playing in our face. Yeah, he's been playing in our face. He's had the audacity to take our harvest. He had the audacity to intimidate not just us, but our family and our communities and our colonies. And the truth of the matter is we haven't said anything because we think that should be the norm because he's always seen to have victory. But some of you are like flick and you're tired of the enemy playing in your face and you realize that God has given you power to tread upon serpents. You realize that God has given you power that if you drink any deadly thing, it won't harm. You realize that I've got strength more than you know. Look at somebody say, I'm stronger than you think. I'm going to keep on saying that to you. Believe it. So we're going to talk about strength on today because I think it's important that we embrace this concept that God has given us strength, that we are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. First of all, I want you to know this, that strength needs a source. 
Strength needs a source. For all the note takers out there, strength needs a source. You know, that's a story about a little boy who one day was trying to pick up a rock. He said, Dad, it's too heavy for me to pick up the rock. The boy still tried to pick up the rock. And the dad looked at him and said, son, use your strength. The little boy kept on trying to pick up the rock. He said, dad, I am. He said, son, use all your strength. The little boy said, dad, what are you talking about? I'm using all of my strength. And his dad looked at him and said, you didn't use me. Because strength has a source. And you have to know that the source of your strength is found in a power that's greater than yours. The source of your strength is found in someone who is higher than you. You got to know that you have a strength that's not of this world. Because somebody said, I got out of this world strength. The reason you haven't seen it is because I have to deal with some kryptonite, but I've got strength that's out of this world and so strength has a source and this is what you have to understand when you're facing the enemy that strength has a source the second strength is a status yes strength is a status when you become a believer now strength is a status it's a status, and the status does not change. And some of us have not walked worthy of our vocation because we don't know this, that God has made us strong. Look at somebody say, he's made me strong. I might not always look like it. I might not always feel like it, but he has made me strong. See, some of you believe that he made you glad, but you don't believe he made you strong. God has made you strong strong the text says he wants you strong because he's strong how are you going to be made in the image of God and not be like God God is strong so therefore he makes a strong people I was listening to something the other day that submitted to me um, that lions don't produce kittens lions birth lions and so if God is strong he reproduces after his own kind and so if God is strong and mighty then he wants his people to reflect who he already is and so I want you to know whether you feel like it or know it you are already strong that's what your status is but the trick of the enemy is to make you question what your status conveys because somebody say, he's made me strong. He's made me strong. I've been made strong. And when I realize I've been made strong, it's not something I have to earn, but it's something that God has given me. Because he's made me strong. Watch this. I want to submit this to you, um, that the enemy wants us to stay ignorant. And so watch this. We already possess the strength because we're strong in the power of his might. But watch this. You can possess something that you don't enable. And so he's saying, enable what you've already been given. Yeah, yeah. enable, activate what you've already yeah. been given. Uh, and so the truth of the matter is, many of us are crying in a hopeless situation because we feel like we don't have any strength, but we have to learn how to enable and activate what God has already given us. Yeah. I, I want you to be reminded of this, that watch this, the ants were no stronger after the grasshoppers came than they were before the grasshoppers came, the only place they grew was in their mind. They did not grow in their body. And the truth of the matter is the enemy's been attacking you because he doesn't want you to realize the strength that God has already put on the inside of you. Let me have a moment right now. Some of you have been facing some temptation and a temptation has been opposing you and you've been on the defense. But what the weapons do is give you the ability to resist. Because you're stronger than what you think. I know the community and the culture is telling you you don't have enough, that you can't survive. But what I came here to declare by the Spirit of the Lord is that you're stronger than you think. But we're going to change your thinking on today because the Bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove that perfect and acceptable will of God. I know it's October and this is breast cancer awareness, but I came here to tell somebody that's going through the process that you're stronger than you think that God is faithful to meet you right where you are because you're stronger than you think so all strength 
It's a status that comes from God. The, the ants didn't become any stronger. They became wiser. Can I submit this to you? Ants don't fight with their muscles. They fight with their mind. <laughs> I love this between David. David led with war. Solomon led with wisdom. And because he led with wisdom, there were some wars he avoided. And when you learn to lead with wisdom, you realize every fight is not your fight. But if you call my number, don't get it twisted. I got hands and I'm going to handle the situation. So what you have to understand is that strength is a status. Could you imagine your status saying you're strong, but your behavior saying you're weak? Could you imagine your response saying you're weak, but your label saying you're strong? And I'm afraid some of us haven't realized that our status has changed, that you're strong. You couldn't handle it in your BC days. But now that you have Christ, your status has changed. Can I get a witness? Are there some things you couldn't handle before Christ, but because you become a new creature, the old things passed away, and God made some things new because your status has changed? I'm not just going to heaven now. God has changed my DNA because whatever is born of God overcomes the world, even our faith. So strength is a status. I want to submit this to you that faith is not a feeling. Faith is a reality. So I came to remind you that you're stronger than you think. I don't care what the campuses tell you. You're stronger than you think. And then strength needs struggle. I'm not going to preach long. Just try my best to preach strong. Strength needs struggle. This is where we get confused because how would you know you were strong if you never had a struggle? How, how, how would you know he could solve it if you never had a problem? How could you know he could heal it if you never had a sickness? Sometimes struggle is the proof that we've been given strength. And so strength is not without struggle. Paul calls it a war. He calls it a battle. In another translation, he calls it a struggle because sometimes the battle you're in is the struggle. I want to submit this to you that just because you're in a struggle does not mean you're out the will of God. That many times struggles are indications that you're in the will of God because the enemy doesn't fight anybody that's running in the same direction. He only fights people that are running in the opposite direction. And so God gives you the strength to deal with the struggle. Some of you are struggling because you're stronger than what you think. Y'all don't believe me? Let's look at the animal kingdom since we're in um, this fictional place. The truth of the matter is that there is a giraffe. The giraffe, many times the mother giraffe will birth her child and what the mother giraffe will do is trip her child even though her child is standing she'll trip the child and the child will fall and the child will get back up and the mother giraffe will trip the giraffe again and then the little giraffe will get back up and the mother giraffe will trip the giraffe again the giraffe has to keep on getting up until it gets tired because what the mother giraffe understands that I am not your opposition but you're going to have to face a real enemy and so what I'm doing is I'm building a muscle on the inside of you so that when the enemy comes in like a flood you'll be able to stand against the opposition because of the muscle that I built in you can I help you that God has enough grace for your stumbles and your falls the Bible says a just man falls seven times but he gets back up I came here to tell you that the proof that you're righteous is that you get back up because God would allow you to fall in this season so you can stand in the next season I want you to know that God is faithful to his promise can I get a witness that God will cause all things to work together for the good of them that love God and that called according to his promise purpose some of you feel like God's trying to kill you and God's not trying to kill you God's just trying to train you because strength does not come without struggle strength does not come without struggle strength does not come without struggle and many times 
struggle indicates how strong we really are. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength was too small. Sometimes God allows you to faint to show you that your strength needs to increase. You can have access to something that you don't receive. God says, I want you to receive the strength so that you can stand because you were not designed to fall. But if you fall, you have an advocate. The Bible says, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling. And sometimes God will let you fall in private so you can stand in public. Oh, y'all don't like that type of preaching. The mother giraffe will let the child fall in private. That's why some of you are upset because you say, God, when am I going to blow up? God says, when you get your legs a little stronger. Because the truth of the matter is, I'm allowing you to make the mistakes when nobody knows your name. So that when everybody knows your name, you'll be able to stand. You know, all of these people that are getting ridiculed, they're being attacked. I want you to be able to stand under the opposition. I want you to be able to stand in the rain. I want you to be able to stand when the weather is not nice. I want you to be able to stand. So watch this. I'll allow you to stumble in private so that you can stand in public. I want to submit this to you. That there's some people that are sitting on your row that look like they stand. They don't have any scabs because their suits are covering their scabs. Their clothes are covering their scabs. But the truth of the matter is God allowed them to fall in private so that they could stand in public. This is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that you know you're in a fight when it's a struggle. Some of you are struggling with your identity. Some of you are struggling with your bodies. Some of you are struggling in your minds. Some of you are struggling in your finances. And God said, you got to trust me because you're stronger than you think. Pastor, I'm about to crack. God says, you're stronger than you think. Pastor, it's hot, but we're tried in the fire. We come out, it's pure gold. You're stronger than you think. Pastor, it seems like if it's not one thing, it's another thing. When I take one step forward, I get knocked back two steps. He said this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. You are stronger than you think. Look at somebody say, I'm feeling stronger already. I'm feeling stronger already. I'm feeling stronger because you're stronger. And you think this is what the apostle Paul is saying. He said strength has levels. That there's another level for you. That you have been peaked at the level. You, you haven't even went to pick up what God has made available for you. Because you're stronger. You're, you're, you're not the tail. You're the head. You're, you're not beneath. You're above. Don't you know who you are? You're stronger than you think. I hope this is hope for the weak. Because God is constantly looking for the weak so he can make them strong. So strength is not without struggle. And I'm on my way to my seat. Because the strength is designed for the strategy. But strength needs a stand. Strength needs a stand. Strength, when it's matured, will cause you to stand just like the baby giraffe. Can I help somebody? Somebody is frustrated right now because somebody didn't help you that was supposed to help you. But have you ever seen a caterpillar, since this is Bugs Life, have you ever seen a caterpillar that goes into its cocoon? If someone tries to help the caterpillar escape its cocoon prematurely, it will hinder the caterpillar's ability to be able to fly and it won't be able to soar as high this is why God allows you to be stuck in something and you feel like you're by yourself you got to know in times like that that he'll never leave you nor forsake you he won't allow your mama to help he won't allow your friends to help he won't allow even your enemies to help you feel like you're stuck in something because God is using the struggle to help you to strengthen yourself so that you will be able to fly where you used to crawl And so when strength is fully matured, it looks like a stand. Paul is preaching to them and reminding them that you're in a fight. And the objective is to be able to stand. That the enemy is not going to hit you in your arm. 
He's not going to hit you in your leg. He's going to hit you in your head. Isn't he wonder why we're dealing with so much mental illness now? Because he's hitting us in our head. Isn't it amazing that we begin to question what we once believed because he's hitting us in the head? Don't y'all look at me like y'all ain't never been hit in the head before. Because the struggle is to stand. And then strength needs support. Everybody say support. I, 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 love, I love the last thing that I just showed because watch this. When Flick stands against the enemy, that's when the support comes. That's when the help comes. That's when the troops come. Yeah, after he was about to get squashed. That's when God shows him that strength has support. And what you can't handle on your own, I'll send reinforcement. That's what the anointing is. The anointing is the full backing of Almighty God to do what you do. In other words, God says, I'll, I'll send support if you would just make a stand. I'll send support if you would just make a stand. I know society is trying to tell you one thing. But what did my words say? If you would just make a stand, support is on the way. I came to prophesy out of somebody that feels like you're all by yourself. That support is on the way. The way, if you will stand long enough, you won't have to stand alone forever, but God will send support your way. Can I get a witness that just in the nick of time when you made up your mind, you were going to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of God, that that's when God sent support? When you came to the end of your rope and the end of your path. That's when God came through. When you let go, that's when God said, I'll step in. When you stepped out, God says, I'll be there because God knows how to step in your situation because watch this, your strength needs support. I'm on my way. So my, see, let me say this as I close because this is where I want to stop right here. Some of us are frustrated because we've been trying to do things in our own power. I'm not talking to your religious mind like, Lord, I know I'm strong. No, no. I'm not talking about your fleshly strong. I'm talking about a greater power.